gritting their way through the play-in. The Lakers clamped up to hold the shorthanded Timberwolves to zero field goals in the final five minutes of regulation. There were some brutal after-time outplays drawn up by both coach Darvin Ham for LA and the opposing Chris Finch for Minnesota, and this game turned out to be an old-school grinded-out affair to say the very least, but ultimately the showing displayed that hard-nosed defense is still fun to watch. Entering this game, the Wolves had 18 losses on the year after leading by 10 plus points, and on the back of Mike Conley who had 23, and Carl Towns who had a 24 piece while being the only Minnesota player with a positive plus minus at plus 18. After Nikhil Alexander Walker made a three midway through the third quarter, Minnesota took a commanding 15 point advantage. But the Lakers would then proceed to reach into their championship aura filled bag and dig deep for a monumental comeback, slowly but surely fighting their way back into the game behind a ferocious crypto crowd. Dying seconds of regulation sees a fake double screen take place where Rui instead ghosts the pick while popping out to the left wing and D'Lo sets a normal on ball that gets LeBron the switch from Anthony Edwards onto Torian Prince who he hits with a moving cross then a slow momentum cross Hezzy to draw the attention of all five Minnesota defenders on his drive before selling the take even further by levitating which gets Towns to guess layup and instead, it's a kick out to the corner to spot a wide open Schroeder for the splashdown with under two seconds left. That showed us both the elusive playmaking ability from James, but also the ice in the veins from Schroeder. Unfortunately, as Braun would call him out for post game, AD had a brain fart and entered Conley's landing space, allowing him to tie the game at the stripe. It's unfortunate. The AD had a brain fart and messed his game winner up. He hears you. Uh, his game winner up. I apologize. I definitely apologize. Having gained solid momentum entering a series against my fellow Torontonian in the shit-talking Dylan Brooks, the Lakers finished the season 17-7, the best record in the Western Conference, and just two percentage points behind Milwaukee for the best winning percentage in the league over the final 24 games. In the play-in, the depth of the Lakers was shown off as they were still able to edge out the W, regardless of it being an off night for D'Angelo Russell. D'Lo was benched for the majority of the second half, albeit being subbed in for the final play we just looked at, but given it was an off night for him, it was smart of Darvin Ham to sit him down and put in a more viable option for the night in Dennis. Still, it was nice to see the Lakers celebrate the expected game winner from Dennis by freezing for the camera executing the D-Lo ice in the vein celly, a nice little tribute to D'Angelo. Meanwhile, Rui Hachimura continues to not receive nearly enough respect, as this man's both evidently and by the numbers, one of the scariest wing defenders in the game. We'll look at how specifically in a second, but going back to Dylan Brooks, and he and his Grizz have had it in with LBJ in the recent past. You can see by the altercation on your screen that the Grizz aren't just there to be starstruck by LeBron and are willing to get up in his grill to make the King a bit uncomfortable. After this heated back and forth from last season, a few possessions after it, LeBron would give Jaron Jackson Jr. his Kodak moment. That encapsulates why everyone's going to be hyped as hell to see this matchup between Memphis and LA take place. Trash talk doesn't get the best of, but rather gets the best out of LeBron James. Before the Lakers beat the Timberwolves to make their matchup with the Grizz official, Dylan Brooks spoke on how he's guarded LeBron in the past in a recent interview saying quote, he doesn't want to go left, I was just making him go left all game, then he would settle or he would pass the ball, and then play physical with him, continuously bump him all the time, and don't let him take easy shots, end quote. Headlining that interview before the Lakers play in game, Dylan said he wouldn't mind playing LeBron in a seven game series. And when asked why, he said, quote, the legacy is there, first time back in the playoffs, knock him out right away in the first round, it'll test us, they got good pieces, good players, and that'll be a good first round matchup for us, end quote. In 11 total games against Brooks, James has a 9-2 record and has averaged over 25 points, 8 boards, and 8 dimes. With Brooks guarding James specifically, in six games total, he shot 58% from the field and scored 73 points in under 50 minutes. 
The stats don't point to Brooks being able to slow down James too much, but he did have success against him the one time they faced off this season. The Lakers took the W, but Braun shot just 8 for 21 from the field. Offensively for Brooks, he'll have to deal with one of the NBA's best wing stoppers right now in the aforementioned Rui Hachimura. According to the lead, the Japanese sensation leads the entire NBA this year in defended field goal percentage. A few spots behind him are Giannis and Draymond. Rui's consistency offensively, all of from the charity stripe from deep range and from his sweet spot from the mid-range, could be the deciding factor behind whether or not the Lakers can take down the reigning champion Golden State Warriors in the second round if that matchup were to take place. In terms of the play-in game, at the end of it all, the Lakers could say, I won. That was in large part due to their scarily elite defense which they displayed possession after the other down the stretch to get back within striking distance and ultimately complete the comeback. Watch this overpowering peel switch by Vando to first clamp up Conley out of the pick and roll, then elusively pivot off him the slightest bit to pick off the entry to Anderson. As Schroeder forces Ant to pick up the dribble, Reeves denies the handoff to Prince, Rui blocks off the passing lane to Cat, Reeves clamps up Prince forcing him to pick up the dribble, and AD closes out perfectly on Anderson. On this play, Despite having the overwhelming height disadvantage, the grittiness, positioning, and underrated strength of Reeves stops Cat from transitioning to the post and forces the kick out to Conley and another great closeout, in this case from LeBron. Cat again has a mini on him right here, but the scrappiness from an undersized Laker guard is again evident, this time from Schroeder, who fakes the stun off Edwards, instead fully rotating over to Towns, and despite the fact that there's 18 seconds left on the shot clock, Ant's gonna hoist up this triple, and AD flies over just in time to make an impact on the shot. The very defensive range and general aptitude that the purple and gold portrayed to bring them back in it is precisely why so many are taking them to upset Memphis. It's that type of resiliency which allowed this Laker team to overcome a 2-10 start on the season, which at the time gave them merely a 0.3% chance at getting into the playoffs. Who do you have winning the Grizz Lakers series? Let me know down in the comments for a chance at next video shoutout. Today's shoutout goes to Billy Courtney, who says, yes, the Warriors are absolutely more than capable of repeating, but they'll have to stop with the turnovers. If they can stop with the turnovers, they can't be defeated. Thanks for that take and every other, and peace.